the work on the transfer of body weight from side to side using a push. I'm going to use this wall as a reference. We can use it as a reference for how close or how far we are away as we're shifting over. That will also give some people with the very guarded and rigid postures some safety and some way to relax because this wall is there and they're not going to fall that way. Now, what about the other way? Well, it's very good to be able to do this in a hallway if you can. Those are usually about four feet wide or so. So you can stand in the middle and then from side to side against either wall. Feel protected so you can relax more to be able to work on what you're actually there for. And that's how do I relax a little bit to allow my body to move more smoothly from one side to the other. The other point is with that, if you have a hallway with a back wall, you get way back there in the end, not on the back wall, but just away from it a little bit. So if you fall back a little bit, that wall is there to catch you as well. It's not that you're depending on those walls to save you. They're there to just help and remind you this is where you're at. This is where you need to be. If you make the mistake, it's there to catch you. So use the wall. Use the hallway as your safety net to help you relax as you're learning how to transfer this body weight, how to shift your body as a unit, knowing that if you go too far, this is right there to stop you from tipping and falling and hurting yourself. You want to begin this with your feet spread approximately shoulder width apart. If you're unstable with that, spread your feet just a little bit wider so you have a little bit more of a base there to help stabilize you. The next thing you want to do is try to relax hands and upper body. Many people say, well, when I do that, I don't know what to do with my hand. Just hang your thumb in your pockets like this. Let this web space right here between your thumb and your finger rest on the edge of your pocket with your fingers outside. This way, if you need to use your hands, you can use it right away. That, that thumb will come right out, as opposed to have your hands in your pocket then when you try to get your hands out, it's, it can be a little cumbersome, especially if you have tighter pants on. And it may take you an extra second or two to get that hand out. And that could be the time where you need it. And now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my body weight by pushing down into one foot and then the other foot. And it goes like this. Push. And your body centers over that foot. Now, look at where my toe, knee, and this part of my chest is. When you're transferring that body weight over to one side, your toe, your knee, and your nipple line will be in vertical alignment. So that's another thing you can check when you're facing a mirror, watching yourself do this stuff, you can see when that toe, knee, and nipple line line up, that's flat. You can see your body alignment, and you can also then feel what you're actually feeling in that foot to compare it. This is where I'm at. I know where I'm at. This is the feeling that goes with that. So then when I want to go to the other side, I just push down into that foot. I have to stop actively pushing into the foot I'm on. Do I just relax that and come off it? No, I just leave it alone. I just focus on pushing pressure into the other foot. And my body moves into that higher pressure. And I stop when this body is flat. So starting with your flattened feet, pushing down into one foot, the body will naturally stop 
right there in the center of that foot. Now, how does this movement of push, push, push compare to using your upper body to initiate that movement? Well, the people that do that are those that have a little bit more guarding or stiffening in their posture. And to begin that movement, they will do this. And then to go back the other way, they're doing this. Now, if you're paying attention to the alignment of where my body is in relationship to this vertical wall, things have changed quite a bit. When I bring my shoulders over, everything looks different. Just relax and allow yourself to gently move your hips over. And if your upper body is relaxed and your knees are relaxed, when you slightly move your hips, everything goes along with it. But when you're a little bit guarded and you're thinking about trying to coordinate how hips and shoulders move, you're going to get some unusual movement because you're trying to control what the body will do automatically if you just leave it alone, if you just relax it. For example, bend this knee and then straighten that knee, bend this knee, straighten that knee. It was the exact same movement as when I pushed into that foot or pushed into this foot. Now, as you saw Carol doing in that short little clip, she was doing a combination of pushing, but mainly she was relaxing her posture enough to be able to just push her hips and shoulders over as a unit and stop there on that flattened foot. It doesn't matter which way you think about or focus on doing it as long as the result is this. I don't care if you focus, I need to move my hips and bring everything along with it. I need to push down, make that foot roll heavy. Everything moves with it. I don't care. And you don't care as long as you're doing what you need to be doing correctly and keeping your posture and stability intact. Now, this looks like it should be simple, but it can get away from you real quick, especially if you're up here stiffing a little bit. Your movements, you've been used to starting them with some upper body movement. So you'll be over here that quick before you know it because your shoulders then are leading that movement. You get over here and you start to get on the outside of that foot, which is where the pressure is on this foot right now, and boom, over you go. Now, I want you to pay attention, and I want you to do an experiment. I want you to be as stiff as you can, and then just lean your shoulders over and feel how, as you go over, and for a fact, I'm going to spread my feet just a little bit wider here. Now, as you come over, you'll feel the pressure go towards the outside of this foot. I'm going to get over our way a little bit more so you can see it better. The pressure goes to the outside of this foot, and you get to a point where you can't stop it, where it's boom, over to the wall you go. That's that point of no return. That's where you say, I was fine. I was standing there and it's fine. And then the next second, boom, I fell. It's because, again, you moved over onto the outside of that foot. The pressure increased. You moved a little bit more. And the point of no return, you couldn't come back because you couldn't relax your body quick enough to be able to compensate for it. The pressure got to the point where over you went. Simple as that. So 
you have to play with that. You have to feel that pressure increasing on the outside of your foot and feeling how that pressure getting heavy there on the opposite foot, the pressure was doing what? It was being pulled out of it. As your stiffened body came over, the pressure increased on the outside of this foot. This other foot, the pressure goes to the inside of the foot. It's getting lighter as well. And as you come over here and start pushing your body over to the side, this other foot is lifted off four when your posture is stiff. Now you can see where I'm flexing that foot and just bringing the heel up. Those people with the stiffened posture, stiffened feet, the whole foot just stays flat and comes up off the floor. Learn what these pressures are on your feet. With this simple transfer of body weight, learn where you need to stop to remain stable. Learn this pressure increasing on the outside of your foot in this case to signal, oh, I'm not supposed to be there, and you bring it back before you get into the problem of knocking up against the wall, falling to the floor. You're learning those mistakes, those incorrect pressures to correct them when they first begin to happen. That's the focus with this transfer of body weight. You're trying to keep your arm off that wall. Look in the mirror to see where your posture is, how it's aligned, and incorporating that with the feeling that you have down here in the foot. You need to be working with this and practicing this. You need to also try to get into that ready stance, the second stance, and feel that same movement. And notice here when my knees are flexed, I'm able to move further over and I'm not falling into the wall because now that my knees are flexed, I have more pressure in both feet and that means I can control my body in a wider range of movement because I have increased pressure down my feet. And as I'm moving over here with these relaxing knees, I'm still holding pressure in the opposite foot as my body is moving over here. I'm maintaining positive pressure in both. Yes, this one gets heavier than that one, but they're both increased substantially to maintain my control. Now, a big caveat to our natural movements are we use both feet as much as we can during our movements. We keep both feet in contact with the floor as much as we can throughout our movements, and that gives us better control, better stability. The problem with the people with a guarded, stiffened posture, they're trying to do many of their movements one foot because as they're coming over they're taking the pressure out of the other foot putting it all into here and most of the time it's in the wrong place there are your falls that's the big problem two feet learn to keep the pressure in two feet and that is going to take a while to develop that skill again you had it before, and it'll come back. Two feet for better control, better stability, smoother movements, better transfer of weight. Life gets a lot easier when you have those abilities.